amazing match point. What athleticism. And there you have it, your EPTA national champions. Best match of the year. Brilliant shot. Incredible stuff. And it's sitting up and he's right there. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the APTA Tour. We are live from the Cleveland Racquet Club in Cleveland, Ohio, bringing you the Cleveland Masters men's and women's NRT 2022-23 season. APTA Tour event, which is the fifth stop on the APTA Tour, sponsored by APTA membership, the APTA national sponsors, Paddle Pro and Fusion, and local sponsors, Viking, Geraci's Restaurant, Trombold Equipment, and Carnegie Investment Council. I'm Matt McClure alongside Randy Markey, bringing you the women's final here from Cleveland. Randy, would you like to introduce our players? Thanks, Matt. Sure, we've got a great finals here lined up with our one seed, Jess Gio and Jacqueline Williamson, playing Allison Morgan and Charlotte Sikora, our two seed. You've got Sikora and uh, Morgan here in the near court. Allison Morgan is in the ad court right now. And uh, you've got Jessica O in the black with her hood pulled up. And Jacqueline Williamson with the puffy jacket. This is going to be a fun one. I have seen all of these players play multiple times. Uh, we're going to see very different styles of paddle from all four of them, which is going to be kind of unique. We'll point that out a little bit as we get into the match. But why don't we take a look at the draw and see what got everyone here. And here we go. Morgan Sikora, the two seed on the top half, and Gaia Williamson on the bottom half. Uh, a few... Uh, you know, more games dropped here and there, but neither team dropping a set on their uh, road to the semis. And then uh, Morgan Sikora played a long match that we were lucky enough to live stream and commentate on a few hours back against Cruz Redesno. Um, Gaia Williamson uh, cruised on through. So this is where these competitors' conditioning really starts to take effect. What is this, match number 92 of the weekend for them? <laughs> uh, something like that. It's possible it's uh, match number five. But... The reality is that uh, everyone has been working hard and, and you know playing great paddle and long matches, and so we certainly hope that uh, everyone is able to have enough effort and energy to cross the finish line. No doubt, really, <laughs> from these four players. Yeah, we've got some real talent on the court here today, and we've got a great crowd here at the Cleveland Racquet Club as we start play in the women's finals. So Sikora to serve to get us started. And this will be interesting here to see some strategy shift. Um, so uh, Williamson definitely, you know, willing to fire on all cylinders, has a big drive off both sides, you know, willing to come through the ball hard and heavy on almost any swing. Um, and uh, and then you got uh, Jess Gaio on the other side, who's a little bit more of a precision player and definitely controls the court with movement and lob and, you know, has a lot of options with shots. Um, but doesn't necessarily like haul off and whale a ball uh, without a reason to. Um, 30, and then over 15. here on the near side, obviously, uh, Sakura and Morgan. Sakura is going to spend a lot of time blitzing and trying to move into the court, get real aggressive with her positioning. And uh, Morgan is going to play the super steady role that controls the court and the points with her lob for the most part. Um, again, all these players have different shots, but that's just sort of – uh, the baseline of you know sort of where they're coming from at the start of the match here. So looking forward to this one. 
You're going to see a lot 40, of aggress 40. aggressive movement from Williamson like that, finding ways to drive, shifting around the court a lot, pulling the trigger on, you know, maybe some non-traditional shots. Deuce. Charlotte Sikora is uh, serving, trying to hold on to her first service game here at Deuce. It's not very often you see the earmuffs come out at the beginning of a match. Got to respect Sakura for. And it's usually Jessica who's wearing the puffy jacket with her <laughs> hand in a pocket yeah. at the beginning yeah, of a match. You're right, yeah. Not Allison Morgan. Yeah, but uh, so as they get started here, you can take a look at the crowd there at Cleveland Racquet Club. Oh, oh, great, great hands. exchange from both teams. Game, Sakura, they lead one game to zero per set. Well done. So they're going to take a early lead here, Morgan Sakura, in the first one. And I know that we uh, saw a super long match with uh, Morgan Sakura on the uh, semis, you know, the first match that we did a couple hours ago. If anybody has the chance on the APTA network, definitely worth a watch where sort of a little bit of everything, you know, but from condition changes to strategy shift, a lot of momentum. It was a fun match to watch. Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, conditions less of a factor <laughs> in, in this match with, a, you know, the ball not skidding around as much and the court. Nice dry, dry court. By comparison, yeah. <clears throat> A little wild little roller there a little from just, Jessica. Just a little late on the contact, I think, as Jess uh, gets the snowflake out of her eye. <laughs> <laughs> just rough timing for that. Great return. Love 30. Nice off Sakura pace. Sakura willing to yeah, step return. in and dip the ball low and then closing behind it for that added level of pressure. question is how many uh, Love sessions on the uh, elliptical has Jessica Gio done today between matches? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, probably three and a half hours if I had to guess. You know she what's interesting in, on that side is that uh, uh, Allison Morgan is right there with her. I mean, she does not miss her two-a-day workouts. Uh, and in fact, I think uh, runs the fitness center at uh, Birchwood where she's the co-director. I think that's one of her, I think that's one of her things Fifteen forty. Well. Uh, not like me, where I would teach Zumba in between uh, my other lessons. Uh, fully certified. Well, I mean, who would want to miss an opportunity to watch you move those hips? It's really more about the, the pants with tassels on them, uh, <laughs> for completely honest. All right, we're seeing good aggressive play from both yep. sides of the net here. Yep. I think you and Williamson just kind of looking to find their groove a little bit. I also think that they had the longer break in between matches, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just because uh, Morgan, Morgan Sakura's match uh, was both on the live stream and a long set. three setter. Morgan to serve. Just good precision targeting there from Morgan. Not a lot you can do with that high ball that jumps out of the corner that quickly. I think you actually see a lot of similarities here between Sakura and Gaiu's game. They're both sort of comfortable closing forward and putting pressure on and you know trying to trying to close on volleys. So So Matt, where are the safe spots on the court for Sakura and Morgan to find 
with their overheads? You know, I would say that the big one, especially with uh, kind of the style of that Williamson plays where she likes to move around and shift and hit drives from all over the place is sort of deep right long. at her. Um, Make which her is sort, yeah, sort of counterintuitive, <laughs> but you know, if, if that's sort of your target and you take long. away the ability of someone to quickly shift and move to a ball in order to drive it, if that's their intention, then you might see, you know, a little bit better result where, 30, you know, 15. sort of you're hitting the ball behind them all the time um, if you catch them in motion. So that's sort of where it, that would be my bailout uh, target if I was on that side of the court. And then on the inverse side, I know that, you know, there's a perception that Allison Morgan doesn't hit the ball as big, so maybe that's a safer space. But if you let her get comfortable with her lob, that is going to chew you up. She will, she will placement and precision you to death <laughs> with that shot. So you, uh, you, uh, I think against Sakura Morgan, I have to swing the ball around a little bit more so that you know nobody's in their most comfortable, perfect rhythm. Interesting early to see Allison Morgan hitting the overheads, which is a different. Formation that yeah, we saw in the last match. Earlier, yeah. yeah. I wonder how much of that might have been about court conditions as well, as we discussed when it was wet and the ball was kind of sliding all over the place. And obviously, Sakura with the ability to kind of put more spin on an overhead, I wonder if they were just going for shorter, quicker points uh, because she was, you know, putting some more, more cut on the ball and that was turning into a few more freebies. Great. That was a great there spot right there. Gaia Williamson. Morgan and Sakura lead two games to one. First to set. Take their first game there. So. Allison Morgan will serve at 2 1 in the first set. Allison is in the blue hoodie with Fusion on the front. Her partner, Charlotte Sakura, is trying to get her pants off over her shoes. <laughs> God, it's so much, it looks so much easier on TV. All right, I like the positive body language here from Charlotte Sakura. You know, one thing that we know about Morgan and Sakura is that they are uh, very, very good at communication on the court. For folks at home, it's such an important part of the game. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And, and sometimes uh, you might be mistaken from watching the live stream that there's not a lot of communication. Um, but at this level, if you're not hearing communication, it just means that players have played together for so long that there is a, you know, another level of communication happening in which they're they're so comfortable with each other that they kind of know who's going to hit what shot. So, really pounding that deuce corner, Williamson. Yeah. That's a dangerous. That's a dangerous shot to give her that much. Yeah, I agree. I don't see. You know, I. I I do respect the intent there. They were trying to hit probably right at her body and force her to dodge out of the way. But if you miss your target and you let her chase the ball down the side screen, she's going to put you in trouble. That's a great close 30, there from 15. Williamson to kind of read. That is where the half-speed drive that uh, Allison Morgan hits could potentially get you in trouble is that if it's read early enough, somebody's going to just be right on top of the net sort of stuffing a volley back into your corner. Not an ideal situation. It's a good roller and a good counterpunch here from Sakura. There you're seeing the really good depth lobbing and good height yeah. 
from Allison Morgan. Yep. And you're which seeing sets up for a nice transition. Yeah, the strength from Allison Morgan there, as we discussed, that's the second time in three games that they have been forced to let a ball bounce because of her putting that lob in kind of the perfect spot. And as you watch them play the net position here, uh, Jess Gio is one of those players that is so comfortable volleying from any position on the court. It's actually really interesting to watch just sort of the change in styles. Williamson will step up on a volley and shut it down from on top of the net, and Gio will stay back at the service line and kind of let a ball show up and hit it with, you know, just to the kind of the perfect spot. Game, Morgan Sakura. They lead three games to one, first set. Well, we just received some great news here in the booth. Uh, they found my wallet that I left at lunch uh, today at the uh, host site over at the country club. So, great news. Turns out I do get to fly home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Randy. Yeah. TSA is not going to shut you down. Yeah. <coughs> it's uh, just a positive update from our world inside the announcer's booth. And APTA Network. That's a good stretch from Allison Morgan there, and a great roller. A oh. little long on the defensive lob. 30 long. I honestly, just seems like sort of an underutilized shot right now uh, in the game is, is that roller in which your target is directly at a player. I know it gets used... Occasionally, I think you see it a little bit more in the men's game, but if you have the chance on a short lob to step up and hit your overhead with that kind of roller style directly at someone's body, it is just tough to get out of the way and chase the ball down. And if you're hitting a block lob, it, you know, it's so hard to control. Yeah. It picks up speed when it hits the court, mm -hmm. stays low. Uh, that was a good look there from Jessica Gio. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good decision. You know, high to her forehand. She's got a good screen drive maybe uh got away from her a little bit out a little long on the serve 40 15 that was sakura's 40 love serve <laughs> <laughs> we all have one of those <laughs> so morgan sakura back into the switch which I think is probably 40, a more 30. comfortable position. Yeah, but Jacqueline did a nice job getting Sakura to reach for that forehand volley. Yep. Patience being shown by both sides of the net. Nobody giving anybody anything to nope. work with. All, all four players deciding that they're going to play the Deuce. long point. Great lob there to find the back corner. All right, so suddenly, Susan, we're at Deuce. Advantage, Giyu. There's a pop culture reference I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> Have I dated myself? Is that what you're saying? How dare you? What's Brooke Shields doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Game. Looks like that got lost Morgan in the lights Sakura there. Yeah, a little bit. It's actually interesting because Sakura is so comfortable moving backwards to hit that roller that when she steps forward on the next ball and, and it clips the tape, it's just such a surprise. <laughs> you know, it's, you're seeing rollers from everywhere, and then all of a sudden the kind of neutral reset goes wrong on you.
Well, we're going to hear from our friends over at Paddle Pro. For over 20 years, Paddle Pro has been recognized as an industry leader in platform tennis. The knowledge, expert advice, vast inventory, and ultimate customer service will help any player find the perfect equipment to take your game to the next level. Paddle Pro is the only website to carry all platform tennis brands. For more information, go to paddlepro.com. You paddle geeks watching, <clears throat> we've got paddle royalty in the umpire chair here Good today. Demo. Oh, yes. Jerry Albrights. Jerry Albrights. Former Albrecht's national chair. champion up in the chair. He played in both tournaments and now is umping a match. He can't, he just can't get enough paddle. <laughs> He's got to be freezing. <laughs> <laughs> no. What a trooper. Best view in the house right there. I wouldn't trade him for the world. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Just to be clear, I was not volunteering. That's a good deep lob all. to push Williamson off the net there. Uh, that was a little let cord clip that 15, bounces in 30. a weird direction. Tough to Allison track. gives the I'm sorry, I'm not sorry signal. Gosh, It's either that or fist pump. Those are your two options. <laughs> you either go all in. We have the wrong Morgan on the court for the fist pump. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a great overhead from Williamson to start to back Sakura off of her comfort zone. 30. If they oh. can keep landing the ball that deep with their overhead target, that is going to be something that really is going to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte does the running man. Yeah, I mean, anything, anything you can do at this point to try to stay warm. Great overhead. Smart to go wide angle with that. Keep everybody deep in the court. Yep. Just as comfort to volley off a net like that. And this is kind of what I was talking about here from Gaio and Williamson, where they're, they're swinging the ball around a little bit more. Um, which I really think is a positive against a team like this. They sort of keep them out of their element, unless you do that. 30, uh, 40. Which I have never done, actually. Uh, fun fact. Don't look it up. Make it work off the seam that sort of jumped right at her head, unfortunately, but made it happen. Good speed to recover. What a dig. Quick direction change there. That is a really good lob. Put enough game height on Morgan that one to Sakura. have to make they Gaio wait for the ball to, to come down. And it kind of threw off her rhythm on the shot. No one likes to wait for the overhead to show up, you know. That's a whole new level of patience in the world of battle. That's a, an attribute I don't possess, a lot of patience. That's why I'm not on the court. I'm in the booth. I think you're selling yourself short. <laughs> I've seen you be very patient. I mean, there's a cat at your house right now that requires it. Well, that's a so fair point. It's the way that it goes. Just a little wide. 15 love. Oh, 
Morgan Sakura staying back on some of the serves here, giving themselves an opportunity to be in the point. This is actually really interesting for them, but more so than other teams, I sort of feel like Morgan Sikora would long. consider the backcourt a position of strength for them. It's yeah, especially like, you know, in the, these conditions yeah. versus earlier today where the court was wet. Right, uh, when yeah. And it's not to say that they don't, you know, come into the net and, and play great points from there as well, but I just think there are circumstances where they feel more comfortable, especially at the beginning of a point, just deciding that, Let's stay back here for a few shots and sort of play to our strengths. Well, that's a good dig. Nice move by Gio to read that ball and cut across early. Well, and your comment about their choice to stay back on serve, you know, there's a lot of misconception from us club level players that the requirement is to hit a great first volley. <laughs> as, uh, a, you're right. As our local Out. pro here, Alex Banchula, 30, likes to 15. say, your job is to successfully defend against the return, not necessarily to hit a first volley. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is exactly correct. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it was a big game changer for me when I was, you know, within my first few weeks of, of paddle and kind of learning how to do it. And I mentioned to someone that every time I was hitting a first volley, it felt like the greatest shot I've ever made in my <laughs> entire career. <laughs> And they were like, I feel like perhaps you should change your strategy. <laughs> Not only do you need work on your first volley, but why are you putting yourself in that position all the time? I was like, ah, that's a good point. That's going to be a big shot. She's there. Big. What a great move from Williamson to chase 40, that ball down. 15. I, it did pay off, though. You know, it's it, there, it there created is this just enough where, chaos. Yeah, right? there is this element where, you know, a lot of times I feel like people watching kind of go like, well, it didn't win the point. And you have to realize that paddle is one of those games where you can win or lose a point like three or four shots ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely caused enough chaos to give a big opportunity. Got them what they wanted. Think a little deep on that lob, okay, so that's going to put Sikora. Morgan Sikora at 5-2. Five five Here in the first set from the women's final at Cleveland Racquet Club. Do you guys do a new ball after seven or nine? Seven? I trade you. It's good. Use it. Change your mojo. I'll take the other one if you want. All right. Well, Morgan and Sakura seem to have a little bit of wind at their backs, um, but you know, Gio and Williamson so are matching uniforms. Always helps. Always helps. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, Gio and Williamson are not I going to. Uh, After seven games, no, right? absolutely. Lay not. down. Yeah, this they're, is. They're, uh, there, this is a this is a grind back into you know a set that they have done many times before. Um, new ball coming out as well. Uh, did after you seven games. Uh, did you serve already or no? It's isn't it your turn to serve? Yeah. Trying to pull a fast one. Pulling a fast one on me here. All right, after a warm up practice serve with the new ball, we are in it. Great volley. Just so quiet. Really nothing happening. <laughs> with a good volley as that drive shows up. The more confident the volleyer, the less they do. Yeah, maybe trying to force that one a little bit off of a pretty deep, hard overhead. 
Good positive body language there from Allison Morgan after oh. Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> Took a big old. cut. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. The importance of the nonverbal communication when it comes to team unity is well documented. You know, it's interesting, the change in the style of play, just as a function of the temperature being 20 degrees cooler than it was in the last match we yeah. we watched with uh, Morgan and Sakura. Yeah, it is It is interesting. It's just sort of changing the style, less screen drive opportunities. The ball is just not quite rising as much as it was in that previous match. Oh. A little wide there, I think. 30-15. That's just such a smart play from Gayo and Williamson to wait for that ball to go through and see where she's going to camp out and then put a ball around her to retake the net. Dig. Just good, smart play on both yeah. sides of the net. Yeah, Nobody's absolutely. Trying seen. to manufacture anything. Yeah. I've seen some intelligent play right here. Nice, you know, safe targets. All they're really doing is changing the speed of shots, but they're not, you know, creating big, huge swings. High percentage shots, yep. um, except for that one. 40, 15. That's okay. But I, I would consider that to be a real solid point there from Kyo and Williamson. Game. Kyo <coughs> Williamson. Morgan Sakura lead five. Right, well, maybe one to too many high backhand trigger First pulls set. on that one from Sakura. But that's her they game. They remain at right? five three. Yep, that was that was what got him up to five three. So you got to understand the desire to not shift something around just because of a couple of a couple of errors. Sit there for Morgan. That's the kind of depth right there that's going to kind of create a little bit more of a problem. You can get that ball to land, you know, within a foot or two of the baseline and reduce the amount of time that you have to make a decision that, that can really change rhythm. Jumping waterfall. <laughs> favorite shots. <laughs> Always excited to see it. Yeah, that's a really great point, honestly, Love from 15. both teams. And just finally, Gio able to step up with an opportunity to kind of put a ball in that, you know, chicken wing right pocket of that backhand volley, just kind of that difficult spot. Oh, 
on again. <clears throat> the point of a drive is really to make the other player miss a volley, not to get it by them right. necessarily. Right, not to through the court. Like that. Well, yeah, that's 30. a nice little precision shot as well. Where just a little fighting in the middle. All right, so love 30. That's a great dig. That low ball out of the corner. It's a tough one. Good lob right on the line. And then they will love 40. transition into the attack. So little, again, as we've discussed, a little momentum shift here with a change in style. Certainly seems like uh, Kyle Williamson started lobbing the ball higher, Out. Uh, which sort of changed the pace of what Morgan and Sakura were 50, able to do from 40. the net and sort of forced them to be a little more conservative. It's uh, a good move there. Good the opportunity there. Yeah, yep. that's a good move. Can't fault Jessica for that one. Speaking of game, faults, yeah, Gyu Williamson. That's All usually right. it's usually your job to curse the uh, <laughs> players. First set. <laughs> Little momentum shift. See if uh, Morgan and Sakura can close out this set. Yep. And this is definitely the situation that Gayu and Williamson are were trying to create, right? Just sort of go back to st stability and you know percentage paddle and try not to give too many freebies. And yeah, they fought their way to get back on serve. And they are with an opportunity to extend the first set. Jacqueline Williamson to serve. Smart overhead control here. Just utilizing the center of the court, not really allowing any extra angles to be thrown at anybody. Caught the back of the line there. Lolly. Great shot into the corner on that. Just really lined that up early. 15 love. Yep, there's a Really smart play 15 from Sakura to slow down the return speed so she gave herself extra time to close in. Sort of a misconception, but if you absolutely <laughs> nuke your return 15, and then you try 30. to go in behind it, the ball will be bouncing at your feet before you can even finish your follow through. You, you really do have to have great speed control in order to be a successful blitzer. That is a fantastic little counter punch push drive there from Allison Morgan. That's the first one we've seen, you know, Gio sort of get like flat footed off of the net and, and she just didn't really read that shot. Point, good hands from Gio Williamson on that point. They were a little pressured with their volleys, but they just kept it together. Out. Went along. Deuce. Back to Deuce. <clears throat> All right, so Deuce fighting off a set point. That was 
out, that, right? Why? Did you call the ball out? The ball was out. She didn't. I couldn't tell. From I can't right. tell what's about as close as that. That's about yeah, as close as that's going to get. Yeah, you got to call the ball. Call it quicker. Might have thought that ball was in. She's kind of activated a little bit from the net. Oh, that's what a great, great, move great from Allison poke Morgan drive. Game. Again, just kind of going with the and precision and keeping set, the ball Morgan low Sikora. at somebody's feet and then taking Six advantage of it by four. closing in and immediately adding pressure. want to thank sponsor Fusion, a partner, a proud partner to the APTA. Fusion creates what's next in branded gear and apparel for your company, your team, or your event with a team of dedicated industry experts Fusion curates high-end product selections for customization with your club logo, team name, or corporate identity. We create a stress-free shopping experience with custom online stores and quick custom ordering to get the gear you need now without any hassle. Visit www.gearbyfusion.com and let Fusion provide you with gear to fuel your brand. Sweet. All right, so first set, Morgan Sikora, 6 4. Getting ready. Start up the second set here. As the temperature drops, you notice the shorter and shorter breaks on changeover and uh, fresh sets here at the Cleveland Masters 2022 23 Women's Final. I'm Matt McClure alongside Randy Markey. I thought the first set was excellent. The second set will be better. Mark my words. <laughs> what do you expect to see different here, Matt? I wouldn't uh, honestly be surprised if we see uh, Guy and Williamson get a little bit more aggressive here. I kind of thought at the end of that first set they went into a shell a little bit, which is kind of not their game. And I am glad to be proven right in this last exchange that we are witnessing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like they were playing it a little safe there uh, the Yeah, end. I feel like they were trying to crawl back into the set, and so they decided to play percentage paddle, which is not the wrong decision, but it's also maybe not, it's the, not their game. It's really not the style that they would prefer to play, and even though that was a missed drive, I think that's a little bit more indicative of, of where they would where they feel most comfortable. But really great teams have the ability to kind of shift in and out of those uh, those styles. And well, so, you know, you, you have to have the ability to do multiple things. And we watched Sakura and Morgan do exactly that in the match that we uh, yes yes that we televised uh, in the semis. We watched them change their style based on the situation, and it worked out great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I think that kind of right there, uh, that last 15, point is sort 30. of where Hugh and Williamson would like to be, with, you know, Williamson being willing to attack and hit multiple drives and crash the net and kind of create a lot of opportunity. I think the one thing that I would like to see Morgan and Sakura do is stay in this formation with Charlotte hitting the overheads. Yeah, I would. I agree with that. She right. tends to create a little more offense yep. with those overheads than Allison does. Yeah, and I also feel that uh, Allison Morgan is so good at reading the situation that I, you know, 
putting her in that position where she's kind of looking to shift and cut off drives is uh, definitely a, a strength, I think. 100%. Gio can find ways to sort of lob down the line and push Morgan off of the net. That's going to definitely create some more opportunity for Williamson. A great lob on the line there. It's tough. Great lob. You know, Allison Again, is just, <laughs> just that kind of. Morgan is just such a smart player. Yeah. She's got very good paddle IQ and she can I mean absolutely is paying attention the first time that a team lets a lob drop between them she has immediately like okay that's the spot and <laughs> she will go to that well until it runs dry Out. with that with that lob location 1540 Bali got a little wild on her 1540 damn it just pushed it just a hair deep That's a great spot. Well, there's the yep. aggressive play you were calling for. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things I, I, I don't think that you necessarily have to have the goal of shifting forward like that to win the point, but I do think you need to shake things up a little bit, you know. Finding some good targets here. That looked like it was back. That was real Very close. Must have caught the call. line. <laughs> Always difficult to look straight down where a ball's bouncing and then make a decision as to yeah. whether it was in or out. But I do think more often than not, we see that call versus the mistake. Absolutely. Honestly. Ooh, I like that look. Game. Yeah. I don't think that her, uh, maybe her feet got into the same position off, as her set. brain was Morgan at. I think Sikora that she saw it develop and, and saw the opportunity to drive, but I'm not sure that she took the initial step that she had wanted to to set it up. And I think we're all guilty of that. Sometimes oh, I never, you get in the middle of a I never make that like, mistake, man. What are you talking about? Come on, buddy, about? work with me. <laughs> Williamson take the first game in the second here. set. The break. Great move at the net there from Williamson. Yeah, I honestly feel like Lock that'll 15. be sort of a, a difference maker in this set. I know that Morgan and Sakura were able to grind out that first set, but uh, it certainly seemed like there were four or five games there where Sakura's backhand kind of went away. And if she can, she can swing her way back into it and make sure she's hitting it with confidence. It really is a, a weapon. It's a great lob. Fifteen all. Interesting choice there. A tough spot. <coughs> I think maybe uh, that just kind of spun Morgan around a little bit more than she was anticipating. She was thinking the same thing I was. She was like, oh, what a great lob from my partner. And then <laughs> Williamson came up with an incredible overhead for the position. <laughs> Good return there from Allison Morgan. Wow. Sakura really in control 15, on the, that series of overheads there. Really... Uh, you know, kind of, kind of pulling the string on on Gio in that deuce corner, kind of hidden behind her with every shot. Leah. 
15-40. Nice three-quarter pace on that probing yep. drive. How do you feel about the lob return? Well, like when is that? When is that a go-to? When I've misread the serve. <laughs> <laughs> when it's mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of interesting because I do think that part of it is you know if you feel pressured by the serve or you haven't set up a drive, it's a great idea to hit a lob return. But I also think it can be a great changeup as long as you and your partner are prepared to capitalize on it. So sometimes I feel like somebody hits a lob return and then both of you are standing back there kind of looking at each other like, yeah, okay, we'll play the point when perhaps you could have immediately set up, you know, a drive or made like a really aggressive move. It just kind of depends on what the style is that you're going for. But a lot of tools with different shots. Oh. Oh, the lead court overhead. It's one of my specialties. <laughs> Great volley. Good defense there. Gio Williamson really creating a lot of opportunities right now as well. You know, kind of forcing Sakura Morgan to shift around the court a lot, jump backwards on overheads like that last one. And you look at the way they're locating these lobs. They are definitely yep. offensive lobs dictating the point. This is a great point. Both teams fighting for control. Everybody's using all of the court, working as a team right there. You see, you see Williamson dip oh. over to the side. A little bit long Game. with that last lob, but Morgan and Sikora. a great point. Games are one all, second set. Now's a good time to mention that Gerace's is the official pizza of the Cleveland Masters, and I can tell that it's here because I can smell it from across the facility. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got a special delivery. Oh my gosh, you're so loved. That is such a smart move by Gio, seeing that she was able to dump that ball down at Sakura's feet and knowing that there was no other option. Just the geometry of the court does not allow for you to do more than <laughs> float that ball up and over the net. set from Allison Morgan there. That is honestly one of the things that she has so greatly improved is that like her the trajectory on her overhead she she has worked on it and it's just gotten so much better where she's able to let the ball drop lower and lower and lower as she can hit that kind of like shovel half speed overhead with precision. Great volley. Good Great move volley. by Williamson there though but 30, Allison 15. Morgan came up with too high quality of a volley. Definitely in a compromised position. Good decision, but too good a shot. Ooh, trouble. <laughs> oh, oh, that is tough. Gio would like that yeah, one Yeah, absolutely played that point well and sort of had uh, all the momentum on her side, and it uh, clipped the tape on the last shot. Game, Morgan Segura. They lead two games to one, second set. All right, so and Morgan Sikora go up 2-1 in the second set here in the women's final, the Cleveland Masters NRT. That is desperation time for Sikora there as well. That is just kind of a, look, here comes a ball right at my body, and I'm going to try to get my paddle on it. And Gio in the driver's seat didn't quite convert it. Thanks to local sponsor, Trombold Equipment. 
Trombold Equipment, the number one choice for sales and service of pumping equipment for over 60 years. We can't do these tournaments without local sponsors. So great to have Trombold, a great supporter of the local paddle community here in Cleveland. Uh, she stepped into that one. Maybe caught it a little bit late, but had a good good read on that situation. Hey, so Cleveland Paddle has a new facility uh, that uh, just opened up relatively recently, right? Flats, In, flats platform flat, downtown. Yeah. Yeah, that First is First public facility in Cleveland. Yeah, it's a... It's been it's a resounding success. Really cool to see, you know, a totally different... You know, demographic and, and group of people have access to it. Um, and, you know, junior programs and, you know, after school stuff going on with kids coming out of the woodwork. Uh, it's, you know, one of those things, bringing, bringing a level of access to the sport that uh, Cleveland hasn't seen before. Yeah, it's been fun to be down there. I uh, had the privilege of teaching a beginner's clinic down there a few weeks ago to a group of folks who were uh, pickleball players. Oh, the reverse conversion. <laughs> discovering paddle for the first time, That's and they awesome. had a blast. That's cool. Really fun. Yeah, Re really cool to see the sport continuing to grow and giving you know opportunity. You know, it's interesting in Chicago, part of the reason for the success and the size of the leagues and everything is that uh, the the courts and you know the locations of everything have been very much tied to the park districts and so there's essentially tax dollars and public funding that are going towards you know some of the new courts and it's brought a level of accessibility and and uh, just you know general exposure to the game well I understand that as you know Chicago is already the 30, biggest 40. league in the country that's and true. It grew 15 percent this year. That's true. Yeah. In large measure to the uh, public access to the courts and yeah. the uh, park system. Yeah. It's really a terrific. Yeah. But it's uh, it's um, really neat to see you know other <coughs> cities and you know programs across the country you know continuing to build and put in new stuff. Oh, oh, that is bad luck. That ball stayed so close to the net. I mean, Williamson was absolutely there, but nothing you can do with the shot. Oh, good move. Good move. Back to Deuce. That's a Charles great Sikora. direction change from Sakura there as she's closing on that backhand with an open stance. <laughs> I think she found it. Yeah, I agree with you. A little bit long Advantage on the Sikora. lob. You know, it's interesting, but in the world of paddle, missing a lob long is very much a pressured miss Game, in the idea Sakura, that, you know, three games to the one. lobbing the Second ball in set. the court is seemingly very easy, but missing a lob long is because you feel like you need to be doing something more with uh, your lob games? than you already are, right? That you're, you need to put pressure on somebody or you need them to stop attacking you or whatever the, the case may be. And so it's always kind of a unique element where... You know, you, you have the opportunity and you push a lob deep and it's really because you're sort of trying to do a little more than you needed. A little too much. Yeah. Wide, I think. Wide, just, yeah. yeah, just happened to let that ball. Love 15. Yeah. 
Out. Sir, just back. So a couple of quick points here from Morgan Sikora. See if they can sort of re-engage, stabilize a little bit. Good shift from Morgan to cover that. Good opportunity from Williamson to counter punch. Early read. Out, love 40. A little long. Great shift there from w Williamson as well, sort of like in mid motion, pulling the trigger on that shot, even though it seemed like that overhead was particularly deep. Like it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly didn't look like a ball that you would like shift and drive at will, but I think that's one of the strengths of Williamson's game is that she kind of can choose to pull the trigger on some non-traditional situations. Gaze. A little wide there as well, so Sikora with we a couple at, of loose uh, overhead. Two, two serving three here set, on our changeover. We'll see if that's a momentum shift yep. or a momentary lapse. Yeah, this is good. So you've been in Cleveland for a while. Do you have a favorite part about Cleveland Masters weekend when it comes to all this stuff? Aside from now sitting next to me and bouncing. So pick your second favorite. Oh, man. Thing. Yeah. Well, you just Don't made it a lot so, harder. Yeah. No, you got to take away the freebies, Randy, and really make you think about it. You know, we've got such a terrific paddle community here in Cleveland, and it's so fun to see the turnout every year. Uh, it's always just a big party here yeah. at the Cleveland Racquet Club. And, yeah. You know, in the last couple of years, we've really uh, seen a, a lot of growth in the game, expansion, mm -hmm. some, some new faces. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to see how welcoming the rest of the paddle community has been to those new new players. And it's... Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. When I was, it, uh, out it's also here. really fun to see the caliber of talent that comes in here to play and sort of shows everybody an opportunity to understand what's possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Yeah, Cleveland has some great players by its own right, but to have a full tournament, you know, like this, with this quality, is you know, I, I get it. It's sort of a different thing. Uh, but my favorite part was always, you know, when I was here for a few years is that because the summer paddle program is so big and has such this like depth of participation there's always a few people that come to this tournament where summer paddle was the first time that they've ever played and then you know so they they got to know people and it was super social and they you know you know maybe learned a little bit about the game and then they come out and watch this tournament and go oh this is what it is yeah <laughs> and it's always it's always just great to see like that kind of you know the, the switch get flipped you know where a few people are like, I thought I was into it before. Now, <laughs> now that I understand what it's supposed to look like, it's a totally different level of commitment. Well, and that's what happened to me. I, you know, I started playing. I came off a tennis court at 47 years old, having never played paddle, to uh, play in social stuff with my wife, and then I came and watched this tournament and went, Oh, yeah, oh, and that just changed everything. Yeah, game changer. But well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely cool to kind of see that conversion of, you know, people from general interest to fanatic. <laughs> I unfortunately chose uh, a well, couple decades that. too late to uh, <laughs> start playing this game. Ages state of mind, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> I am 86. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't look a day over 85. Thank you. That is one of the nicest things anyone's ever said. <laughs> So Morgan Sikora here have kind of found their groove. Couple of quick points. They clearly started to put their returns in difficult spots. There's a couple of missed first volleys or quick transitions. One of them was a let court. 
That is just such a low drive. Game, Morgan Sikora. From Allison Morgan there. He stepped Morgan. up on it early, intercepted Second it set. from way inside the court, and just knocked low. it down. All right, smart. So continuing to think their way through the match, changing the formation a little bit as Williamson's return and drive in general have been a bit of an issue. Great hands. Good touch. Wow. What a great exchange. Really in fun. trouble, out of trouble, back in trouble again. <laughs> and we're back to neutral. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my middle school experience. <laughs> you're in trouble. Well, I guess it's fine. No, you're in trouble. This is a particularly good series of overheads from Sakura here until that yeah, was phenomenal four in a row where the ball barely came above the snowboards as it stayed low the whole time Morgan deciding to stay back let the return go through control there from Allison Morgan and a really good dig by Jess Gio to spin around and dig that ball out that's good touch it's gonna stay low again hands It certainly feels like Morgan and Sakura have kind of locked in here with their position at the net. They're sort of, you know, when drives are showing up, they're not really moving on the volley. They're just letting the ball show up. And when they're hitting overheads, it certainly looks like they're comfortably covering. Like those couple of volleys there, you know, yeah. just letting the ball, letting the ball do the work. Great lob location. Very smart yeah. by uh, Sakura and Morgan to let that ball bounce. Oh, Just how come the back and take it. Yep, on the line. Oh, that is 30 such long. a great point from both teams. I identify with Jeskyo's frustration there in playing a strong point the entire way through and then having a lob clip the line like that and hug the back screen. Boy, that serve must have caught the outside of the line. Yeah, that was sure looked out right on the edge. Allison Morgan has really done a nice job here mixing up her when she's choosing to come in or stay back based on her serve. And there they are switching again at the net. Yep. Put Charlotte Sakura hitting the overheads. It's a couple of deep nick corners in a row and that one gets pushed a little bit long All right. so 40, 40 love. love here I believe serving to go up 5-2 in the second Good pick. Great dig. <laughs> that is tough. So, Matt, what, what have you seen change in the women's game over the last four or five years? Uh, I think the prevalence of that roller has really picked up. Um, 
you know, probably in the in the last four or five years. Not that it didn't exist, but this should become more regular 40, for 15. sort of all teams to to hit. Um, I also see a lot more success in the transition game, and uh, I feel like you know. When I first started, there was sort of, it was, I refer to it as the era of stubbornness, game, where it was like, we are serving and moving into the net no we matter what. And two, um, as returns got bigger and, and you know, love. players, you know, the athleticism kind of increases as it goes. You started, you know, started uh, seeing more, you know, transition play. Stay back and take a ball off the screen and look for that drive, you know. Less block lobs, more screen play. I think it, the game has absolutely elevated uh, over the past, you know, six or seven years. Uh, it's just awesome to see. Fifteen A little long on that lob, just drifted a bit. I like Sakura's body language. She is not letting that rattle her at all. Great volley. Great volley there. Not, uh, didn't flinch at all, just stuck it. Thirty fifteen. Little confusion at the net, but fought their way through yep. it. Yep. Back to being organized. Worked it out. That situation there with kind of that little confusion up at the net is probably a little bit more telling, you know, about maybe team strategy. Uh, that happens a little bit less when you've decided what you're doing with, you know, each ball and who you're going to attack and where you're trying to put your offensive opportunities, but. If you kind of lose track of that in the middle, and you and your partner are going to crash into each other. Oh, what a great drive from Sakura! Just it's a really a heavy shot. Great spot. Yeah. Yeah. And you also see really good teams uh, within a single point maybe fall in and out of their own strategy, and then be able to right the ship like Gio and Williamson did right there. I think Jerry Albrecht can feel his toes right now. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel my toes just thinking about him. I mean, I'm in the hut and I can't feel my toes, so I can only imagine. <laughs> hey, I tell you, I love this point from Guy Williamson. I mean, this is do or die time, so. You know, sort of the the last opportunity. You know, if they can if they can change some momentum and come up with a couple of big shots, and there's oh, one. There it is. Yeah, <coughs> if they can, if they can 40, just find 30. a way to kind of get through this game. Is the same situation they were in in the first set that was uh, awfully close. Uh, Forty thirty. Jerry looking like he's sitting on the beach in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey. you're a little too comfortable, Jerry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, they were able, we're able to, to make it work. Charlotte Sikora serving and for the at, set. Uh, five serving three. Looking for the title here. But the Cleveland Masters NRT. One thing we know for sure is that Gio and Williamson are never out of it. Nope. You know. 
is not the nature of the game. The decision. Up 15. Yep. Just a little wide. Great pickup from Charlie. <laughs> Quiet Morgan and Sikora's hands are yeah. in that. It's really textbook, old. right? Yeah. That's a tough shot there. Sort of burying itself in the corner to take it to 15 all. Mm. 15 and Morgan 30. is not going to be happy with that one. No, she, she got what she it wanted. Well. Yep. She knew where the ball was and looked to where she wanted it to go. Thought uh, again, I thought I had patented that shot, but you can't own everything. Fifteen <laughs> forty. <laughs> I think Sakura would like that one back. A little as well. deep, yeah, I think. So same right. thing here, finding a way to stay in it in an attempt to sort of accelerate. It's so easy to just get a little slap happy with a couple of shots here and there. Great lob. Nice move. Another ball off the neck. Yep, Game. that's all right. Gonna be the end of that game. Owen Williamson Morgan fight their way back to being on serve. Five games to four, and one set to love. Have we watched this set before? I'm having the weird, weirdest sense of deja vu. Is that just me? prognostications here what do you what are we going to see here i don't know that's a deep word i'm going to have to look that up first <laughs> well and then I, i'll come back to you and give you an answer I do to have your question my word of the day thesaurus <laughs> oh okay good mine's on a toilet paper so i <laughs> totally identify with that um no but I, I think that this is the same thing that you know this were almost identical situation to where we were at in the first set and morgan sakura were able to fight it off they just had a little too much momentum and now the question is can Gaia williamson kind of turn the corner on this one and hold that momentum for another game to bring it back to even and then all of a sudden it's a very different experience then the pressure shifts to morgan sakura feeling like uh <laughs> you know that's uh, five games in a row here that we need to consider oh sneaking the ball over oh, oh my gosh Love 15. I also understand the frustration with that particular scenario. Out. Little deep. Love 30. Again, that off pace mm -hmm. kind of poke drive caught Jessica in transition. Missed the half volley. Just a little deep. Love 30. Bit of a bit of a rage swing from Williamson there. <laughs> Oh, Good I can't. What Jessica. a great dig. Oh, that was out. a little long Love 40. on the transition. Right, but man, triple match point. Gio coming up with that get right at the body is incredibly difficult. All right. 
And there it is. And that we is have it. A champion. Morgan Sakura, our champions. 2022-23 Cleveland Masters. Well played tournament by everyone involved. Especially you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, the best thing that I did was choose not to play. <laughs> it sounds like we're going to try to get a little on-court interview going with our players. So stick around for a couple minutes while we set that up, and we'll be right back. Well, another great match here at the Cleveland Masters Women's Final. Allison Morgan and Charlotte Sikora, the two seed over Jessica Gio and Jacqueline Williamson, the one seed. 6-4, six, 6-4, four, six, four, and a very hard fought match. We are waiting for the opportunity to do a little on-court interview here. But it's just been a terrific weekend so far here in Cleveland at the Cleveland Racquet Club. Um, it's been, you know, this, this draw here in Cleveland this year has been very strong on both sides, both men and women. And, uh, you know, both, both of these teams had a relatively easy path uh, to the semis Morgan and Sikora had to fight off a tough Cruz Redesno match to get to the finals but uh, they were able to succeed and prevail in the finals really great showing and we are just waiting for our on-court interview with our winners. We've got Matt All right, McClure. I'm Matt McClure here with the APTA Network Heading with our champions the of the Cleveland Masters 2022-2023 season. Uh, congratulations, ladies. I thought that was super fun to watch uh, because I was in the hut and you were out here, yeah. which is the perfect way to watch paddle. So tell me a little bit about it. You played under tremendous condition changes uh, for your previous match. How do you deal with that? Typically, of course, next we're going to that steam room over there. Yeah, no, let's all everyone belongs in the steam room. I think there's no argument there, absolutely. But obviously, you went through like sort of a rain that turned to snow that you know the court dried up and then it you know got wet again. So, you guys made great adjustments there. What were you thinking during that semi? I think during the semi, we really stayed in our bubble and the weather really didn't affect us much. We we just kept playing a game, we were hoping. The spin would be, you know, helping a little more, but it wasn't really doing as much as, as we thought. So we just stayed focused. And against Marcella and Liz, you just can't give, yes, any free points. So we were like, we are going to stay in it. And if we got to be here until 7 p.m., we are here until 7 p.m. <laughs> and that's what we did. What time is it? But 7.30 is too far. I totally get it. So you obviously had a lot of momentum swings in those last couple of sets, which sort of mirrored each other. As you're, you know, sort of taking a lead and then they're climbing back into it, what are you thinking about in order to actually shut the door on that? Yeah, we had to really stay together and yes. stay focused because there were like some dips in that final and yeah. 
we just kept saying let's play together and we yes. did we, yeah, yeah that's so clean. <laughs> so, clean. <laughs> so clean absolutely so clean, uh. well it's amazing because in the hut we often talk about roles and who's playing what and you know that everybody's you know batman has to have a robin what's it like to both be batman <laughs> we love being batman <laughs> You are great at it. You are great at it. You're super fun to watch. Good luck in the rest of the season. What's next? Are you playing Detroit or Detroit? Yes. All right. yes. Well, congratulations on your victory. It's awesome to see. Absolutely. Yep. And, and good luck for the rest of the season. Stay warm. All right. Back to you guys in the booth. Amazing match point. What athleticism. And there you have it, your APTA National Champions. Best match of the year. Brilliant shot. Incredible stuff. And it's sitting up and he's right there.